Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. Please keep in mind that this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Uh, and if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. Um, also, this message is timeless. Just because the, um, the message is dated for Wednesday, July 10th, it doesn't mean that it has to resonate with you on the 10th. It can resonate at any time. So at any time after the 10th in which you are finding this message and it is resonating with you, at that moment, then it's the right message for you at that moment, okay? All right, guys, so um, getting into it here, I haven't done the pre-shuffle yet because I really want to, <laughs> I really want to show this to you. Um, and also, I think this is the focal point from where we're gonna start our conversation today. So yesterday, after I finished the daily reading, um, after I finish morning coffee, what I do is as I'm uploading the video to YouTube, um, I take time to shuffle all of the decks and clear out all the energy and just put them away. And I work my way from the Oracle message all the way back to like I do, I do the Oracle deck first and then I do the clarifying deck first, you know, and then I go and then I finish with the, the initial deck, right? Well, I did the initial deck and I just want to show you that this King of Wands that came out yesterday that was sulking and pouting and like having a, maybe having a little bit of a temper tantrum, he decided he was going to do that on my desk all day. <laughs> Literally this is how the deck landed after I cleared out the deck and shuffled. The King of Wands was at the very top of the deck and his back was turned to me. and. And I mean, I'm not, obviously I'm not taking that personally. Like he's, it's not like he's take his back is turned to me per se, but I mean, it was on my desk all day. So there you go. But um, this is kind of the focal point that I wanted to speak f from or start today's message from. And I actually did end up rewatching the video. Well, not rewatching it, but watching the video again last night um, before I went to bed, just because I was curious as to the message because it really felt like even as i was doing it it really felt like it resonated strongly and then the um the response that i got from everybody that resonated with it was strong so i was watching the video again and um part of it was striking because and a little bit um a little bit um confusing or contradictory only in the sense that we had an individual who was represented by the king of wands but was acting in a bit of a childish way or at least that's kind of what I was saying and that was kind of what I was picking up but it's less childish or immature it's more egotistical well it's typical it's typical um twisted, misaligned, reversed, um, negatively aspected, however you want to say it, King of Wands energy. Super egotistical, very self-centered, very, uh, sh yeah, very sure of themselves, but um, just because someone is sure of themselves doesn't necessarily make them on the uh, most favorable side of the situation, we'll say, instead of saying the right or the wrong side of the situation, because in, in reality, there is no such thing as right or wrong. So you're either on a favorable side or a not so favorable side. And how this King of Wands energy feels like it was acting was very egotistical, very self-centered, which I guess, yeah, could translate into a little bit of, um, you know, a temper tantrum or maybe a little bit of childishness because it seems to be that the energy from the King of Wands is um, refusing to see anything differently, refusal, these are the things I'm hearing, refusal to see anything differently, refusal to see eye to eye, refusal to expand a mindset or a consciousness and this makes perfect sense why because the king of wands is representative of fixed energy okay um 
and uh, fixed energies. The fixed energies in the zodiac would be Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. If you have any of that energy in your chart or if you're familiar with any of those energies, like you have people in your life that are any of those fixed signs, um, and you've ever experienced trying to get a fixed sign to do something um, that one, they wouldn't ordinarily do, or two, they're not even willing to do, it's damn near impossible, okay? But that's the nature of a fixed sign. They are, they are hard to move, hard to sway off the path that they have chosen or that they are taking. They are steady. Um, they are consistent, regardless of whether that consistency is in a favorable way or a non-favorable way. Um, and this is these are all good things. These are all energies that are needed in given circumstances, just like mutable signs have energies that are needed in given circumstances. And cardinal signs have energies that are needed in given circumstances. It just depends on, you know, the specifics of that circumstance and whether and whether that whether that fixed element is um, uh, desirable or not, right? But then, also the thing that what I also what I also want to show you here is if you look on you see on this card here you see that massive anaconda or massive snake. It looks like because it's so big, it looks like it could be an anaconda. Um, but regardless of the species, it's a massive snake. And to me, that is speaking to, at least in this situation from what I'm feeling about this, because snakes do represent, can represent wisdom, okay? But also a snake can represent carnal desires, I want to say. A snake is... Um, uh, a symbol for the Kundalini, which is the serpent or the life force energy within one, in, uh, within an individual. Um, but to me, this, in in this specific circumstance, the the this big snake on this card, and the fact that the King of Wands is facing that snake, to me, is saying that he would rather um, pay more attention to his carnal desires or um, his inner beast or like his his um, attachment to um, the pleasures of the flesh really than anything else. And it really kind of feels like it's more like he has, <laughs> or he perceives himself to have a stronger connection with that element of his life. It's almost as if he's made a commitment to that element of his life. Um, I am hearing that, a commitment to it, and he would rather honor that. But it really, what this really feels like is he feels, whether this is a man or a woman, I'm just, it doesn't matter because we are talking about the energy in the masculine energy in this King of Wands. You could be a woman and embody this energy, okay? But I'm saying he because we're talking about this King of Wands character. Um, he He feels, it feels as if he has, he feels that he's developed a better relationship. It's that energy where you have like that negative or dark figure that's saying, come on, man, I'm your friend. Who's been there for you through all of this, through that? Who, who was there to help, you know, make you feel better? And it's that kind of energy, right? So he may not necessarily be aware that he's under manipulation of a darker entity that's just kind of trying to like siphon the life, siphon his life energy, his life force, yeah? So, okay. Oh, well, looky here. We do have some pre-shuffle energies coming through. Okay, I'm gonna stop here for now. Um, we have this Four of Swords in reverse, and we, <laughs> good. God, and we have the Nine of Wands. We also have the Tower in reverse and the Fool in reverse again. Someone is really standing their ground, really standing their ground. Um, okay, so with the Tower, well, okay, we can talk, let's do this the, the, because we talked about this yesterday. The Fool was here and it was this side of the Fool. Um, and it was reversed. And this was talking about how someone just 
refuses or is not willing to take some sort of leap of faith, even though um, but this comment, I feel like this comment is really um, important here because it's saying it's like a message, a, a direct message from the universe. It's almost as if this person is standing on the edge of the cliff and is having trouble making the decision. And so the so he says, all right, universe, show me a sign. Like, am I going in the right direction? Is this right thing for me to do? And the universe makes this huge gesture of like this comment. <laughs> and they're still like, mm, no, that's not good enough. <laughs> Okay, fine. So then the universe comes through and creates a tower moment. And in this side of the tower, you see the back of it, right? In this side, you see the front of the tower. And you see these two people being thrown from the, the tower uh, on fire. You have this all-seeing eye almost type thing that's saying, yeah, I see right through all of this. You can't hide from me, motherfucker. And the... <laughs> and the um, Lightning is striking the tower. Well, here on this side, lightning's still tr striking the tower, but you see the mask is being broken, completely shattered, and you see that this tower that was built was actually a hollow structure. And then you have the two sphinxes of the chariot that are now... Um, the ch and the chariot here, you see, it's crashed on the rocks of that tower. The two sphinxes are no longer connected to that, that, that chariot, so they're now going in their own direction instead of being balanced and moving towards one central thing. And this can be seen as you've somehow, the, what, with the energies that you, that you had with the chariot, you somewhere got like way off path and just like crashed and burned and now that's being revealed to you and all that's being brought down but it's in reverse you guys it's in reverse this feels like oh let me do it this way yeah this feels like someone is absolutely refusing to see anything differently to make any sort of change now you have the four of swords in reverse here and you see on this side i believe didn't this this might have i don't the last time the four of swords came out i can't remember if it was yesterday or like the day before or something like that but it was this side and it was right side up so it was like Someone is like, okay, we're resting, we're taking stock, we're looking at the situation. He looks like he could probably be a little remorseful, but really he's just deep in thought, deep in meditation, or he's just taking a break, taking a freaking nap, you know what I mean? On this side, however, you see what, you see the destruction that's happening that could be the cause of this gentleman's remorseful posture even his his like oh god what are we gonna do about this right but be instead this is reversed so instead of someone saying looking at the carnage <laughs> the carnage that is happening around them instead of someone recognizing that their whole freaking village is ablaze right now it's like you're purposefully willing to ignore it and you are persevering in your point of view, your opinion, nine of wands. Even though the situation has got you battered and bruised, the universe, it's like the universe is doing everything it can <laughs> to get you to change direction, knocking you upside your head this way and that, six ways till Tuesday, but you're still, whoever, whoever this is, whoever I'm talking to here, Either you, the viewer, or maybe someone that you're connected with, maybe someone that you're watching for. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Take it as it resonates. But if this is not you specifically, please don't take the fact that I'm saying you personally, okay? If that doesn't resonate with you. But also, if this is triggering you in some way, then that's a good thing. Focus on that. But some, for some reason, someone just won't give up, won't give in, won't surrender. And hey to each his own, you know, but, mm. all right, so with all of that said, with all of that said, I just spent like 15 minutes <laughs> continuing yesterday's reading, but hey, it's all good, so now let's get into the official message for today. 
I, you know what I've noticed, you guys? Ever since I started using this deck, the messages seem to be way more... Oh, looky here. Huh. Oh my God, you guys. Look who turned around to face us. <laughs> Yo, you can't make this shit up. With what? The Nine of Swords in reverse on the other side. And in this, in this side, this to me is kind of, it's, look, he's facing us now, and now it's like somebody is like releasing the fear, the anxiety, and all that. And is looking out into the distance. In this case, what this feels like with this Nine of Swords here, but it is in reverse, yes, but it feels like someone is releasing or letting go of the anxiety, letting go of the fears, trying, at least attempting to look past all of the swords that are in front of them and see what's really going on outside. I mean, I swear to God, you guys, you can't make this shit up. I mean, I was literally just shuffling to clear out the deck and it landed this way. I did not plan that. <laughs> wow. But what I was saying is that the, uh, the, the messages that are coming through with this deck are way more concise, I want to say, consistent. They're, it's like we're just continuing the conversation. And it may have been like that in the past. Maybe we just didn't notice it, but... Now it's very obvious. It's really cool. Okay, I'm going to give this one more shuffle. And then 15, 16 minutes in, we're going to get to the, the core message for today. <laughs> That's funny. All right, guys, here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good for, of all involved for today, Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. Yeah, okay, so I'm totally seeing green and purple. Heart chakras are opening. Divine wisdom is spilling in. This is a good thing. I'm gonna give this three shuffles and then we'll see what we've got for today. For the collective, Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. For the collective Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. All right, here we go. The fool is on the top of the deck. I noticed that, that's kind of cool. And now it's facing this way. That's awesome, okay. Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. Best messages, please, spirit. Oof. Ooh, what is that about? Okay, overall energy here. We have the two of pentacles in reverse. And on the other side, we have the fool again <laughs> in this way. So now, but it's upright this time. Two of pentacles is in reverse though. Boy, we also have the high priestess and the queen of swords. The High Priestess is in reverse. The Queen of Swords is in reverse. I feel like we're talking about the feminine this time. Mm -mm, ladies. Ladies and gents. Ladies and gents. What do we have here? Yeah, we're talking about the feminine this time. Um, okay, fems. Let's talk about this. We're going to start... We're going to start with the Queen of Swords and the Empress. Oh, not the Empress, the High Priestess. This is you. Okay. Queen of Swords is in reverse. Her back is turned. And the High Priestess is in reverse. Uh, you're really fighting your intuition a lot. And this is not to say that you don't necessarily have reason to be um, 
hesitant to believe the messages that are coming towards you. Part of this feels like, I mean, some of this is a little bit of insolence um, of um, some of the kind of childish behavior that the, the masculine was portraying or putting forward. Although the problem here is that this is a much bigger message. This is a much um, stronger what the feminine is dealing with here is universal knowledge or universal wisdom or um, secrets about your path or your journey, about the uh, contracts and commitments that you have made with certain souls before you came to this physical manifest or this physical um, incarnation you know, like the plan of your life. Um, and these, the, whatever the high, this, this information that the high priestess is bringing forward towards you flies in the face of what the patriarchy stands for. And what the high priestess is saying here is, I'm on your side, please trust me. But the queen of swords is saying, no, I can't trust you. I can't trust anyone because the information that you were giving me before led me or led us to this destructive situation. And now what are we supposed to do? You really think that I'm gonna just gonna sit here willy nilly and just trust you like that? Because I'm pretty sure I remember you saying just to trust me before and look at what happened. Then the high priestess follows up with, darling, they have free will. <laughs> you can't hold that against us. Everybody has free will. You knew this going into the situation, but the situation has been so destructive, so hurtful, so this, so that, so, so much, uh, so, so um, different to what we expected, mm, expectation, keep that in mind, but so different from what we thought would be, from the way we thought this would work out, that you have, that, that whoever I'm speaking for or, or, or um, channeling for here has completely iced over. And not completely iced over, but there is a part of you, there is a certain section of you that is just pure. It's like you can consider it, it's so frozen over, it's so cold that it, it's almost like dry ice. <laughs> almost like dry ice. <laughs> okay. Um, now, you also have the Page of Swords with the nine of swords um and both backs are turned here <sighs> the first thing i'm getting with the nine of swords is that um it's like you want to be free of this but you feel like you're in a prison you're you're in this stone castle and you have a window you can see outside but there is a barrier between you and the outside, you and some sort of freedom. You feel like you're trapped and it's your thoughts. It's it, uh, literally, it's your thoughts that stand between you and this open world, this open freedom. Many of you who are uh, in this collective, in this part of the collective that I'm channeling for have literally either forgotten or are blatantly um, choosing to push aside the element of free will. The understanding of the element of free will. Again, we all knew of this before we came here. This was not a surprise. We did not make our plan and then get down here and then God said to us, oh, by the way, everybody's going to have free will. No, we knew about this, okay? You can't let that stand in your way of living your life. You have a right to free will as well. And this is not, this is, I really recommend that you do not approach this from a point of view of, well, he's got free will, I've got free will, so I'm gonna do what the fuck I want, motherfucker. I'm gonna get back at you because I've got free will. No. <laughs> 
that's not gonna help <laughs> okay but then with this page of swords here coupled with this nine of swords in this depiction it's like you're trying you're seeking a way out of this you're seeking freedom but yet you for some of you you're not looking past your own thoughts okay and this is gosh this is a continuation of that you have the page of pentacles in reverse which to me is saying no new start or no leap of faith or no new cycle nothing it, it didn't there was it, you may have been in this situation you may have reached the page of pentacles state where you had a new opportunity a new beginning but it failed or it fell short it didn't it didn't progress past the page state right but then you have the devil here and this is the back side of the devil and in the book it kind of describes this as the devil's not really looking so you could kind of make your escape right now but you see you're so caught up in the anxiety and the fear now part of this is the belief that and now depending you this this is a general message okay so we could be talking about anything um but this is specific that's coming through for those of you that resonate with the twin flame journey um there's a lot of dogma we'll say about how you know you have to you have to it, there's a lot of vocabulary and dogma that makes it seem like you have this counterpart or you have this awareness of this counterpart and so it would behoove you in essence to stay in a position where you are going to leave space open for a counter for this counterpart for your twin flame um instead of really honoring your truth your love your 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 happiness instead of manifesting a situation in life where it is actual true unconditional love regardless of who it comes for there's some sort of vocabulary on well getting into really it's like in essence getting into a relationship with someone knowing full well you have this twin who is who you are destined to be with and so in essence you quote know better it's like it's like shaming the feminine out of living from her own place of free will which is not the is not fair <laughs> it's not fair because in essence what this really is is about finding unconditional love within yourself finding wholeness truth uh, connection with source the balance between masculine and feminine within the self and then helping others find them find that for themselves okay regardless of whether you actually end up with the physical embodiment of your twin or not and and some of you i'm this is coming through so i'm just going to say it some of you may be sitting there like well you're probably just bitter because you're not with your twin and blah 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 whatever it, it no <laughs> no i would rather be happy first of all i'm just going to say this first of all i'm not even really quite convinced fully you know what I mean? Just because like the, this Queen of Swords energy within me is like, mm, I mean, I hear you, spirit, but I'm still not quite convinced. Okay, so I'm resonating with y'all on that one. But at the same time, it's like also, we're gonna turn the Queen of Swords upright and we're gonna say, I wanna be happy and I wanna have true love. And so if it doesn't come from this individual, that's fine. I don't care. <laughs> but see, here's the other thing that the High Priestess is saying. Especially for those of you that have been really going through this last purging over the last uh, last week and this week. Um, and if you're finding this reading um, past the, the actual dates that this was released or uh, recorded and uploaded, um, you may still be going through this type of purgy type energy so don't worry about the time frame but if you've been going through this there has been a lot of synchronicities and for me personally i've been hearing and experiencing a lot surrounding this one individual 
still. <laughs> okay? So that to me is kind of like, okay, Eric, maybe you should not Queen of Swords so much. Maybe the universe is right. Well, obviously the universe is right. But maybe I'm not as misaligned as I might be thinking I am. Okay? Because part of me is kind of like, there's got to be something wrong with me. But that's not necessarily the case. But the other thing that the High Priestess is trying to say here is, yes, we are bringing this information to you because this person is directly connected to you. But that does not mean that you have to end up with them. We're just keeping you up to date. You're just feeling this connection. You're experiencing with this connection with this individual. Regardless of you, if you have that physical interaction, okay? in the 3D. This is really not anything you can really escape from. And I know that sucks sometimes and that might seem unfortunate, but she literally just said, it's what you signed up for. I mean, can't hold that against me now. <laughs> Okay, so you have a way of getting out of this. The devil has his back turned. It's almost as if the devil has turned his back because he knows he can't control you. And yet you are still keeping yourself in the devil's chamber. What, is, what, is that, what does that represent or what does that mean? It means you're keeping yourself attached to the negativity. Instead of using this scout type energy to find a way out of the pain and the heartache. Although I will say that is what part of, of a massive part of all of this purging that we've been doing is representing. And that's really kind of what we've been talking about, um, especially with the, they're saying specifically, they're reminding me of the message from this past Monday, very well manifested. All of this purging that you're doing and all of this stuff that you're having to face right now is clearing the air, is clearing the way, is slowly removing these swords out of your way so that you can reach that window, so that you can reach the outdoor, so that you can get out of this prison that you feel that you're in, okay? So that you can stop juggling. The Two of Pentacles here feels like a good thing. Wait a second. Wait a second. I don't remember if this was reversed. Huh. Okay, I don't remember. Because now, because the, the fool is on the other side of the... Uh, okay, I'm going to take it this way. Because the, the message that I'm getting with it now, regardless of how, it's, how it was when it started, because the message I'm getting from it now is that you're not juggling anymore. You're not just trying to keep the balance anymore. You're moving on. The fool. You're taking a leap of faith and you're trusting the universe. So there is a specific message that's coming through here with this comment here. This is very similar to what we were saying in the beginning of the reading about the, the like it's in terms of like maybe the masculine saying, is this the right decision for me? Someone show, someone show me a sign. Well, there goes that sign. And so it's like, okay, I can do this. So for some of you specifically, there is another relationship that's coming forward. And some of you are like, mm, I don't know what's going to happen. Trust me. Just trust me, says the universe. Just trust me. Because this relationship could be a situation. Uh, if nothing else, oh my God. No, it's the Queen of Pentacles. I thought that was the lovers underneath the fool. But it's the Queen of Pentacles. That's beautiful. Looking off into the distance, looking into her, her domain. But if there is a new relationship coming forward, either it could be someone that you settle down with, that you have that unconditionally loving experience with, or it's someone that's going to help you heal an element or an aspect to help move you closer to that final representation of that unconditionally loving, committed relationship that you're looking for, okay? Final piece that we have here. Is, the, pa is the, the Page of Wands? Is that the Page? Yes, the Page of Wands in reverse, the Seven of Swords in reverse, and the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. This is... Um, this is an interesting message. 
Page of Wands is representing an individual or an energy that's very sexual in nature, but it is very immature. Okay. Um, Uh, give me a second. I'm just trying to decipher what this message is. With this Seven of Swords here, deception, trying to get away with something, cheating, lying, stealing is what I'm hearing. Ace of Pentacles in reverse. All of this is in reverse. This message is a little obscure. This part of the message, at least, is a little obscure. Uh, 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 wow, excuse me, obscure. <laughs> um, It feels like this page of wands is an energy of someone that's just immature, just wants to have sex or something like that. Um, with, uh, trust me, I will never tell you there is anything wrong with having sex. <laughs> but it, this just feels like one night stand energy, not really non-committal. It's just immature and childish. Seven of Swords trying to get away with something. Ace of Pe Oh, it's as if someone like tried to offer you something solid just to get their rocks off and then they, but they were just trying to, they were just deceiving. We're gonna get some deeper clarity. I, I need to clarify this specifically. But it feels like this is a rejection of this energy for good, for sure, and that's a good thing. Okay. All right, so we're gonna cross over into the clarification section now, followed by the um, closing message from the Oracle Guidance. Obviously, this is gonna be a longer reading. We're already almost 40 minutes in. But I wanna start by I wanna start by clarifying what this is, this situation here. Page of Wands in reverse, Seven of Swords in reverse, and the Ace of Pentacles in reverse. And I really, I don't even want to look, pay attention to like the side of the card this is representing. I just, that's not as important as just what these three base cards represent in this reversed state in terms of this situation. Maybe we can get some more after I kind of figure it out, but it's a very obscure message. I feel like it represents multiple things at once. So let's see what we get here. So some clarity, just some so some clarity on this, please, Spirit. Page of Wands, Seven of Swords, Ace of Pentacles. Okay, there's the Ace of Pentacles again. We also have the Three of Pentacles with that. Okay. Underneath, overall, Six of Cups. Okay. Soulmates, yeah, there's a bond here. Okay, um, oh shoot, the fool with the sun in reverse. And it's interesting because the sun came out and as it was falling down, it turned sideways. But the reversal is the appropriate way to look at this. All right. Okay, basically, because <laughs> we have the Fool again, we do have the Six of Cups. Okay, all right, what this is saying, the Six of Cups is talking about the soul contract that was made. The Ace of Pentacles and the Three of Pentacles is talking about a new start, a new opportunity, a new moving, movement forward that comes from working on yourself, self-mastery, okay? The Fool is taking a leap of faith in a brand new direction, starting a brand new cycle after having completed the past previous cycle. The Sun in reverse. My dear, dear feminines. This... This was all part of the path all along. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a tough pill to swallow. Because. Now, uh, before I go any further, this doesn't necessarily just speak 
to twin flame relationships. This is something that everybody is somewhat subject to or susceptible to. There it is. That's the word I'm looking for. Sub sub susceptible to, right? Twin flames are just kind of on the leading edge. But my dear feminines or my dear individuals that are in this type of situation, this was part of the plan all along. Why? Because this was to get you to master yourself and create the life that you truly want or to learn to create the life that you truly desire for yourself, not for who this individual or this energy says. Not what this individual or this energy says is best. What you say is best for you. This was all a catalyzation towards mastering yourself. Does that mean, if you are a twin, does that mean that this person is just a catalyst and is not your actual twin flame? No, not necessarily. But ultimately, the journey itself was meant to get each and every one of us to master ourselves, regardless of whether we end up with this person or not. That's just the icing on the cake. And that's something that we've been saying as readers for a long time. The twin, speaking specifically to the twin flame journey, the twin flame journey is not about the end result. Being with that person is literally just the cherry, just the cherry on an already iced cake. And who iced that cake? You did. Who baked that cake? You did. Okay? That is the point of all this. So that you can master yourself. So that you can be a better version of yourself. A more whole and fuller version of yourself. A more connected version of yourself. Connected to yourself. Connected to source. And then teach others or show others how to do it. How do you do that? Lead by example. That is the simplest way. And how do you lead by example? You walk your talk. You shine your light. You be who you are. Damn it. <laughs> the sun in reverse. This is the best card in the deck, whether it's upright or reversed. So in this reversal, it feels like this is kind of that energy that a lot of us were in when we were like, holy shit, we've been duped. Mm, yeah, not so much, says the high priestess. No one is trying to dupe you here. But you see, the sun in reverse also says that kind of feels like things are a little bit hidden. It's like the sun is around, but there's, it's still a little cloudy. Yeah, but it needed to be that way. Because if you knew everything going into it, or if you knew, well, first of all, if you knew everything going into it, I mean, that doesn't even make sense. You wouldn't need to go through the experience if you had the knowledge already. But if you knew what the outcome was supposed to be going into it, you wouldn't have learned as effectively. You wouldn't have done the things that you've done or made the mistakes that you made, and I'm putting those in air quotes, for a reason. The path wouldn't have been the same. The realization wouldn't have been the same. The lesson wouldn't have been as strong, wouldn't have taken as firm hold in your life. Make sense? Okay, so now, now let's get the closing message from the Tarot here. All right, closing message, please, Spirit from the Tarot to wrap up this reading.
Oh boy. Oh boy. All right, we have the Page of Swords here underneath the deck. The first two cards to come out were the High Priestess and the Two of Cups, and they've come out in reverse. And then you have the Six of Cups. All right, some of you are... Um, are choosing to ignore your intuition about the direction to go in in terms of the soulmate relationship that you're looking for, potentially. I mean, this literally just feels like Spirit's wrapping this up from the through the tarot by saying, look, guys, regardless of whether you want to believe the universe or not, you do have this connection with this person or with someone. And what I'm seeing with the Page of Swords is that you're searching high and low for a connection that you may already be aware of. Take that as it resonates. I don't, that seems to be a weird way to end this. But also, oh, I get it. Just because the High Priestess has information or the universe is revealing information, there's, there are downloads coming. There could even be, this even could be representing like telepathic communication, the High Priestess. Even though all of that may be happening, that doesn't mean that you can't trust your intuition to bring you the, the, the soulmate bond, the strong bond, the strong deep connection that you desire. And it, it doesn't necessarily mean that this connection can only come from whomever you're hearing about from the high priestess, from your intuition, from the universe in the 3D. I mean, it, 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 it's, that, it's not necessarily true. Okay, they still have to align with it themselves. So don't worry about it. That's why expectation and, and, and attachment needs to be released so, um, so much. Because even your resistance to it being a certain person, regardless of whether it's gonna be that person or not, your absolute staunch resistance to it is putting resistance in place for anyone else that would come in. Because you would need to heal that wound with that specific individual before you can have the space to fill it with someone that would be able to honor the commitment or to, be, to, to resonate with you. By, by, by showing such strong resistance towards forgiveness for whatever has happened, you are keeping yourself in that vibration of the situation that hurt you instead of releasing it and changing your vibration to resonate with something that would be what your Six of Cups is. Forgiveness is more for yourself than it is for the other person. And for some of you out there, you're saying, I could never forgive you or I never want to forgive you because I'm not trying to let you off the hook. Girlfriend, you are doing more damage to yourself than you know. You're doing more damage to yourself than you are to them because you are actively keeping yourself in that vibration. And that is actively blocking what it is you truly desire. Okay. And so I'll say this, 
like I've said in the past. So, so you go through your emotions, you forgive, you let go, you heal, you release, and then all of a sudden, boop, here comes that person again. You're crossing paths with that person. So now, so now what? Okay, well, you're in a good state. You're in a high vibe. You've done your work. You've released. You can actually look at this person in the face and say, hey, how are you? And now they're approaching you saying, hey, um, can we work this out? Can we try this again? That might be a little triggering. But then observe. What is their vibration? What are they saying? Are they, are they coming at you like this page of wands here? talk about how they've changed, but really you're feeling that they're being deceptive? Oh, I'm getting it now. They're being deceptive and they're really not trying to offer you really anything stable, or this is not the type of, it, the type of offer that you want or the, ener the, vibra the energetic vibration that they're in does not resonate yours, does, with yours, does not match with yours, does not harmonize with yours. Well, if that's the case, then okay. All you do is say no and keep it pushing. There's no reason to throw a fit, throw a tantrum, throw swords and daggers. No reason for that. It's just obvious from that point of view that they haven't changed. And if that's the case, then oh well. But you have, you've healed, you've done your work. You're good. I mean, it's literally, that's like literally it, <laughs> you know? Okay. So somebody, somebody posted in a comment how um, they miss the hour long morning coffees. Well, here you go, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. All right, so now I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stop there. And I want to close the message here with our oracle guidance from the Crystal Mandala deck. Look, I know this is easier said than done. I've been in this energy myself. And part of the most frustrating aspect of this of whatever the high priestess represents or the energy that's coming through repre it, it means for you, what the, the, um, the message that's coming through means for you. Re oh, shit, I lost my... Oh, um, I've been in this kind of energy too of like what were to happen if I cross paths with this person? I would probably get triggered. And that right there is a sign that, okay, I still have some healing I need to do. But instead, I kind of have been in this Queen of Swords in reverse energy of just refusing to let it go, refusing to face it, refusing to heal, refusing to forgive, because it's like, well, no, I'm not trying to let you off the hook, or no, it's like, no, I could never forgive you. That's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. Okay. So I, I say all that to say, I, I get it. <laughs> You're not alone here, okay. All right. Here we go. Oracle guidance, please, spirit, to close out this reading for today. Wednesday, July 10th, 2019. There it is. Ah! Archangel Gabriel and Turquoise, safe to be seen. And it is card number 11. Mm-hmm. And how? <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. All right. We bring you the gift of safety in being seen. Over lifetimes, you have loved the earth, returning again and again to serve humanity, liberate the human soul from fear, and spread a message of love. 
You have spoken truths, shared messages, and inspired many. Yet, in your visibility, sometimes you have felt misunderstood and vulnerable. You have been admired and loved, but at times also feared and attacked for the empowering message you brought to the world. In you, there is a memory of this, and although you wish to share your light with the world again, there are times when the thought of being seen doesn't feel safe. We are here to let you know that you are protected in divine grace. It is safe to open up to your inner knowledge and to share your message with the world. The light in you is stronger than fear. It is time to shine fearless and bright. Um, okay, I'm gonna read this part. This oracle comes to you with a message. It is safe for you to be seen. In this lifetime, you are meant to be a spiritual leader of sorts, to bring through the light of peace, love, and guidance that others around you need. Don't be afraid of their reactions. Some will love you for what you do. Others might, uh, might not understand or resist or even attack in fear. But in truth, you cannot be harmed. You shall always be what you are, and no one can ever take that away from you. It is simply not possible. No matter how many times you have been blocked, denied, dismissed, or abused, you find your way back to the truth of your heart again and again. So your soul has learned over time that your spirit is indestructible. It has learned that the truth of love is always there for you. Love will always welcome you into its arms and you can feel at home within your heart, even if you don't always feel at home in the fear-based belief systems that so many still consider to be reality. Okay, I'm going to stop there. There you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I wish you all the best. I hope you all have a great day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Bye.